When a member is loaded in compression, which often is the case for two force members in trusses, buckling is a possible failure mode. Buckling failure occurs when the compressive load becomes unstable and the member has a sudden lateral deformation. For a pin-pin member, such as our two force members in trusses, the maximum force the member can sustain in compression is given by the following expression. FCR or F critical is the maximum compressive load before a member will buckle. This is equal to pi squared times EI over L squared, where L is the length of the member, E is the Young's modulus or material stiffness, I is the area moment of inertia, which is a property dependent on the cross-sectional geometry. What we see from this equation is that F critical is proportional to 1 over L squared. Therefore, if the length of the member were to double, the load required to buckle would decrease by four times. The two modes of failures that we can understand for trusses, if the stress in a member exceeds the yield stress, we know that the member will fail. Another mode of failure that we must be concerned with is if a member is loaded in compression is subject to buckling. Let's look at an example of a truss loaded with four kilonewtons at F and six kilonewtons at E. Given that the material is made out of aluminum with a yield stress of 2.76 megapascals, and a Young's modulus of 6.89 gigapascals, we have that all beams have a uniform cross-section of 0 0.25 times 10 to the negative third meter squared, and the area moment of inertia is 5.21 times 10 to the negative six meters to the fourth. With this information, we can determine the safety factor of this truss under these loads. Using the method of sections or method of joints, we can solve for the forces in each member. Here we can see a nice table that lists the member and the force experienced in those members given the applied load. However, the force alone cannot tell us what the safety factor of this truss is. To calculate the stress in each member, we can take the force divided by the area, which I have defined here. The safety factor due to the stress is simply the yield stress divided by the stress the member is experiencing from the load. By looking at the safety factor from the stress in the truss, we see that none of the members are close to failing or close to the yield stress. I have also listed which members are in tension and compression. When a member is loaded in compression, we are concerned with buckling. Therefore, I will include the length of the members who are in compression. Next, you can calculate the force required for buckling in each member. This is given by the formula pi squared times E times I divided by the length squared. This will give us the force in newtons required to buckle the members. To calculate the safety factor for members in compression due to buckling, you can take the buckling force and divide it by the applied force in each member given the load. Comparing the safety factors in each member of the bridge, we see that the lowest safety factor of this bridge is in member CD and it is closest to buckling. The safety factor of the entire bridge is limited to the lowest safety factor of any member in that bridge. The safety factor in this bridge, given the applied load and specified geometry, is 2.059.